Good morning, everyone, uh, and assalamu alaikum. And uh, welcome, everyone, to our session today, Empowering Women at Workplace, Practices to Achieve Gender Equality. Uh, Prof Khan, good morning and to you. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Honey, for that wonderful welcoming speech just now, an introduction. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for attending this particular webinar. This is the first of many series that we intend to do. Uh, regarding what we call the future of work webinar. Uh, Honey had already said our topic this time around, our very first topic is about gender equality. The future of work looks at uh, the topics that are related to transformation, benefits and challenges, particularly for the future of our work. And especially looking at yeah, that coming up, we will have Industrial Revolution 4.0 that is definitely gonna change every bit of interaction that we will ever have. But before I do that, I want to thank my entire team, okay, which includes Najwa as well as Doreen uh, for all their work and also not forgetting all our uh, speakers today. Today, well. uh, if I may uh, invite um, uh, Ms. Ricci to share first, yeah? on your thoughts about what the future generation would like to see as a result of women's empowerment. What does it mean uh, from the perspective of Gen Z when it comes to the meaning of women's empowerment? Is it an overrated thing or how, how, how do you see it? Over to right. you, Richie. Right, right. Uh, working as a home tutor, right, it allowed me to see you know, how women is being treated in the home. And while working in the startup, dealing with corporates, you know, engage with a lot of high-profile people like Dato Nicole David, like uh, Dato Bibi Yusuf, or even group CEO of Nando's, Matt Chong Ling. And one common trait that I found in all these women leaders are they are very confident, but at the same time, they are very humble. Yeah, it's, it got me thinking, you know, there are many women out there is being called bossy, well, leading the team, right? So I believe all these bias impact women day-to-day -day, uh, work experiences and ability to advance, you know, and I believe all women are far more likely to experience everyday discrimination in the workplace. So as a young generation, as a dandy, you know, what is my opinions on, you know, towards empowerment and what we hope to see in the future? Um, um, I believe women empowerment is about respect. Yeah, respect is what the new generation is looking for in defining women, uh, empowerment and what we'd like to see in the future, right? So like besides like women support women or men support women, what we are looking for is both men and women investing their time and effort to understand and respect each other. Uh, let me start with like the company point of view. I believe in the last five years, right? We have seen more women rise to the top level of company and increasing of number of companies seeing the value of having uh, more women in leadership and proving that they can make a progress on gender diversity, which is a very important step in the right direction, right? Yep. But still, women is continue to be underrepresented at every level, right? To change the number, uh, company needs to focus where the real problem is, and we often talk about the glass ceiling, right? To prevent a woman from reaching the senior level positions, right? But in reality, I believe the biggest obstacle that women face is much earlier in the pipeline, right? So I think for this reason, I believe the culture of work is equally important, right? Um, all the employees, whether it's men or women, need to feel respected that they have the equal opportunity to grow at advance. And employees do care deeply about opportunity and fairness, right? Not only for themselves, but for everyone. They want the system to be fair. So just like I talk about respect, you know, it's the new definitions that the sure. uh, new generations is looking yeah. at. Yes. Gender equality or women empowerment is not a very serious issue that we are discussing about already, <laughs> which is a good thing actually, because all mm. the women empowerment that movement that is previously have done or the education mm. have been given is making mm. an impact now towards our my generations. Yeah. Hi. My goodness. <laughs> all right. So hi, hi again, Sherry. Now there's there's a lot of stuff going on with. Uh, uh, Richie's uh, thoughts over there. Now, the thing is, I know that you've worked uh, quite a bit in the human capital, and um, uh, there's, there's a lot of 
things happening in the pipeline as well and why the human capital team matters yeah so mm. i'd like to invite uh you to give some thoughts in reflection to what richie uh has mentioned you know uh, in terms of empowerment and all that uh there's a lot of culture uh, uh, yeah. buzzword going on uh, based mm. on richie's um, uh, reflection mm. care, to, care to share some thoughts about this sure happy to thank you richie and thank you for uh, opening up the discussion mm -hmm. uh, i've already sort of posted what i meant uh, what i uh, think uh, women empowerment is or empowerment is it it, it appear uh, uh, sorry it applies to all genders men or women uh, you're right, honey. Culture plays a very, very uh, important role, and culture is shaped even from uh, birth at home, in the environment that we socialize in, and all the way to the workplace. So, where um, if we're going to look at how we advance women, whether in the workforce, whether as entrepreneurs, um, it's actually addressing some of the cultural norms that uh, doesn't support the growth uh, of women in the things that uh, she, he, uh, she wants to do, right? Mm. So uh, in the time that I was uh, in my previous role in, in Talent Corp and even before that, we looked at this quite seriously because for Malaysia, uh, a lot of those who uh, are in university and uh, graduate for universities are close to 70% women. So mm. this is data 2018, mm. right? So we have a very big population of highly educated women when they uh, enter the workforce, um, these sort of very uh, constricting cultural norms do not uh, help them to grow. So uh, sometimes when I talk to uh, companies or uh, we look at policies, the, the, the point that we make is that, um, okay, uh, we, we need to support women, but here's the thing, look at the bigger picture, there's almost half of our human capital missing in the workforce. So if we don't address this, we're going to lose you know, a bunch of very talented women who contribute to the economy, who has a role. So when we break it down to say, look, we're losing half of our human capital, then the discussion becomes different. That's where you actually start addressing the cultural norm. If we say companies need to have good talent, countries need to have uh, you know, highly qualified uh, human capital, then you know, the, to address that, we need to do uh, different things to allow uh, and, and grow women in the workforce. I think we all perpetuate the culture that we are comfortable <laughs> with, men and women. So um, what we need to do is challenge that, get out of our comfort zone, and I've done that many times. And <laughs> if there are things that we feel is not going to support us as women in the workforce, in, in, uh, in, in businesses and all that, we need to speak up and continue to talk about this so that change happens. Otherwise, we get comfortable and then we slide back to, oh, okay, you know, it's okay, we're doing all right. Uh, we can't do that. We have to recognize the um, achievements that we've made, but really mm. push the boundaries. I have never mm. experienced a glass ceiling. I didn't even know what it mm. was mm. because I was very clear about what I wanted to achieve. I was very clear about the kind of skills and expertise I bring but I know where the gaps are and I, I improve myself and I've been nurtured to, uh, to a leadership role by really taking ownership of my, my own destiny. So we need to break culture norms. We need to question when we don't like certain things, break, uh, uh, push the boundaries. But for us as women, we, we need to actually then own our destiny. Yeah, thanks, honey. You know, I'm actually dying to go because I'm not very popular when it comes to women empowerment topic, firstly. <laughs> Uh, tell, let, let, let me tell you why, okay? Because uh, every time I leave, I'm always wondering every year after Women's Day, are you? I, I tell everybody they're not going to invite me again. And guess what? They invite me again. Uh, let me tell you why. <laughs> because I, I, I tend to call a spade a spade, okay? Yep. So uh, let me be very blunt about this. Firstly, when we talk about women empowerment, my mm -hmm. question is always why do women need this empowerment? Mm. right mm. because you have it in you you know your strengths you know what you can do you know what your talents are right you know um literally you are able to say i can juggle or i can't i can multitask or i can't you you know yourself so what you need is not the empowerment from me i'm no 
angel falling from he heaven or, or somebody who has a magic wand who says, here you go, get empowered. And people say, can you come and speak on woman empowerment? And I'm thinking, why do you need me? Who am I to empower you? But the thing is this, I think what women need, whether they are from university students to, you know, right up to the track of leaders today, everyone, even if you consider us strong leaders, what we need is we need that endorsement. We need that push. We need that friend. We need that mentor. We need that backup. We need something that says you're on the right track, go. And probably that's what Sharin is referring to that I gave her, right? So it's not about empowering Sharin because Sharin knows, you know, more things than digitalize in, in digitalization or so many other uh, areas of expertise, which I don't have. But you find what's, what your strengths are and then move those strengths. And that's what you're empowering other people with. You're empowering them with the fact that yes, I can do it. Yes, I think I need to move on. Thank you for the endorsement and you know, things like that. So I think that for me, that's woman empowerment. It's about giving that support, that push, opening that door, being a mentor, being a friend, endorsing ideas, mm. right? And uh, promoting and not backstabbing each other, but rather being happy for other women. Uh, this is something that, you know, I've said all, all along. Now, coming back to a glass ceiling, my question is, uh, I thank you for even to Richie for saying about talking about glass ceiling. Now, there are two ways. There are people who tell me there is a glass ceiling and I'm not going to argue with you. You are probably in a situation or a place where there is a glass ceiling. So what I'm going to tell you is women wear heels. Crack the damn glass. What's the problem? No issues. Just take your high heels and crack the glass and move forward. Just whack it. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> For people like me, I don't even see it as a glass ceiling simply because I know my values. I know what I bring to the table. Right. I'm an equal partner when I'm in a session, just as long as a side of a man. And I only take on things that where my comfort zone or my expertise mm. lies. Mm. I'm not going to meetings or try and be someone I'm not. Mm. So therefore, I don't need to have that glass ceiling because I'm confident in my own skin. Mm. I'm mm. confident with my talent. I know what I want to do. So coming back to the question of, uh, you know, um, uh, about people, some people are strong and some people are not. I think the first thing is identifying what your strengths are. Mm. Don't mm. try and be someone else and don't, and stop telling yourself, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not somebody like somebody out there, why would, why would I want to compare myself with you, Hadi? Because I know I'm not going to be in your area of expertise. Why would I want to try and be a doctor and mm. talk about menopause? I'm far away from that. <laughs> I'm that because the session is recorded. Um, why would I want to talk about digitalization? I have no interest. I just want to have a cup of coffee with Charine, right? So I think you need to identify where your strengths are. What can you do? What can you bring to the table? Absolutely. When you identify and you know that, automatically the confidence comes in. I think there is always a fear somewhere. Uh, what do you think about this? Um, you know, I, I, I do a lot of career coaching. Yeah. No, that's okay. Forget about this. Okay. I think it's okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, firstly, let me thank you, honey. And... Uh, I would say good morning to all because I didn't get a chance just now. I forgot to switch on my mute. So like what Dr. Alia said, mistakes happen. So all you say, sorry, and go ahead. This is what, you know, we have to learn to do, right? Especially in technology now, things can happen. Yeah, and uh, it was amazing listening to all of you. And um, firstly, uh, but woman empowerment, let me just address that. I too don't agree with empowerment because I think we are all empowered. But unfortunately, we have forgotten the power. We just forgotten that we have the power. Actually, this started about 5,000 years ago. Prof Kang had asked a question just now, just mm -hmm. to say, uh, Aristotle is my favorite philosopher, but even he in his book, Politics, said women are powered to be controlled. So we better start now. So they started 5,000 years ago to play with our mind to make us feel not empowered. And we are going with that level. So we need to be awakened, maybe change the empowerment word to enlightenment or awakening or something like that. But it, it needs to be done because a lot of us are still living with the old thoughts, old belief system. 
And uh, like Shireen said as well, you know, women are dropping down over the pipeline. You can see that they 70% of the health sector workers are women. But when you look at the policymakers and you look at the leadership level, it's less than 30%. So ah. nothing, yeah. So people are dropping down. And when you talk about this um, glass ceiling, now I too don't believe there's a ceiling, but women have that ceiling in their head. It's not outside, it's <laughs> inside of you. So you make choices to drop out because, because this is a very important one, women are not allowed to be a woman, right? Over the years, we By had who? to compete. By yeah, who? we had to compete. That's a good question. We had to compete in a world designed by men. I'm not saying dominated by men, okay? There's, there's no domination going on. So many years ago, 100, 200 years ago, the world was designed this way because male wanted to, not with any particular interest, but they just thought this is the best way to do. But the problem is, despite all the failures and shortcomings of the system, you're not changing it. So women had to step into a man's role. See, how many of us appreciate the physiological changes that women go through, right? The pregnancy, the PMS, premenstrual uh, syndrome. It, it, all these things are real. Menopause is real. Women are dropping out because they cannot. They, no, the system doesn't understand the physiological things that they're going through. So the glass ceiling is actually within. So, okay, I can't cope. I'm going to drop back. So even for me, right, so when I finished my six years of posting in all over Malaysia, they just keep pushing you all over the place, finished, I wanted to do my MRCP, I went to UK, I got married there because my husband was a doctor in NHS, and I've applied for unpaid leave, mm -hmm. right, unpaid leave, because I have my family, I'm just starting my family, I want some time off to sort things out, I'll come back, I want to come back as a specialist. Two months later, I get a call, they said, we can't work out your unpaid leave. Um, you, you can't get unpaid leaves. You have to leave the institution. You either leave the marriage institution or you leave the government institution, right? So I was put in Am that- Am I case. hearing this right? Yes. So they told me this, you, you either come in and join tomorrow or you give a resignation, 24 hours resignation. So, all, so it's literally saying, leave your marriage, come here mm. or leave us and go there, right? So married for two months, I made the decision to leave the, the government institution. I'm not sure if I would have done that now, but <laughs> <laughs> then being a young married mother, I, I did that. So you see, it was not supporting me. So I had to drop oh. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I came back and I wanted to get back into the practice with the two young kids growing up, the system wasn't supporting me. It was not providing me the facility to work where I want or work according to my time. So I had literally no choice but to start my own practice because I didn't want to mm. rot as a doctor. You were cornered. Yes. So, but, but again, from where I was, I had to make it. So I could, I can break my ceiling from wherever I was, the system. So this is what got me into promoting this menopause coach because mm. women ca are coming back now after 40, 45 families settled, they want to come back to the workforce. Now, are mm. we supporting it? The foreign countries like Switzerland and uh, Finland, they have menopause policy where women are, they, they take this issue as serious, you know? So they have fans, special fans for, to handle your uh, hot flushes. They have yes. toilets nearby so you can go and come. They understand your perimenopausal symptoms. They give you the, uh, the coaching and the assistance. We do not have it. So like Ruchi said, their gender, their, their generation now, they are very aware of the woman empowerment. They don't see the glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. But my question to Ruchi is, are you free to be physiologically the woman you are in your workplace? That's a very, um, a bam question. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a, a, a curveball question. <laughs> Dr. Mugil, that's a curveball question. Oh, Anyone? you're supposed to ask me, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's a, that's a curveball question because, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not everyone who understand this physiology uh, physiolo physiology changes that takes place uh, for female uh, employees, for example, you know, uh, menstrual cramps, uh, challenges during pregnancy. You know, mm -hmm. and they say, "Oh, you're just being a woman." Uh, and even even, even from women child as well. care, yeah. Sorry to just even childcare, right? Mm -hmm. You're given two or three months, but what do you do with the baby after that? 
you can't just dump somewhere, you know, you should have a nursery to support in your workplace. It's, it's not possible. So women at the end is men or women, the women always make the decision, I will step back. So we are losing a lot of workforce that way because the system is not, so, no, this, it's a subtle discrimination, I would say. Richie, would you like to yep, uh, yep. share one or two things? Yeah, uh, I think thank you so much for everyone to uh for coming to the sessions. I think it's a very amazing opportunity for me also to 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 speak uh you know to share my insight with all of you. Uh, I will just end my sharing. I mean, right about everything with just a quote from Madonna. He said that you know I actually put in the chat box. He said that as women we have to have to start appreciating our worth, uh our own worth and each other worth, and seek out strong women to be friend to ally yourself with to learn from, to collaborate with, to be inspired by, to support, and to identify. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Richie, from, uh, from my generation to your generation, I'm surprised that you are actually quoting Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very good quote that you know everyone should uh, look at it <laughs> it's not about generation this yeah it, yeah right but she's quoting madonna <laughs> i'm i'm half expecting her quoting uh you know somebody taylor current, swift. right yeah taylor swift or something like that but madonna of all of all thank you so much that was yeah. really really lovely may i uh next invite uh sharin uh to share some thoughts Thanks, honey. Uh, maybe just three things. Uh, we want to actually come to a point where we effect change, right? Mm. So uh, I always think of it in this way. Uh, we have to change behaviors. So I used to work in an organization with investment bankers and all alpha males. When I walk into the room, I will take the first seat on the room. And I will talk to people I don't know because the organization was big and it always happens to be a man. And I ask them certain questions and I gain their respect. So always be change your behavior. Don't go to the last seat at the back. Girls always do that. <laughs> go to the front, speak to someone you don't know, share uh, you know, something that you can contribute. So that's behavior. Change language. If you don't like in the workplace, yeah, I'm going back in the workplace. If you don't like what people are saying, or even in university and all that, if you don't like what people are saying, men or women, correct them, correct them in a nice way and say, look, you said uh, this, I don't think it's right, it, it's kind of offensive, can we change and speak in this manner? So change behavior, change language. The third is challenge. So always challenge the norm, always challenge status quo, uh, never be comfortable and say, okay, that's it, I don't want to do anything else. Because when you start to challenge, that's where you build your resilience mentally, emotionally, physiology, everything else, right? Because you're const constantly feeding your brain and your soul with new things that you want to achieve and you want to challenge. So change behavior, change language, always challenge. Thank you. Awesomeness. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> May I please invite uh, Dr. Mugil? Thoughts, please. Okay, I would say uh, lead by example, be empowered before you empower anyone. And every woman should learn to be unapologetic of who she is. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Thanks, Doug. And last but not least, Dato Alia. Uh, I will pick up a little bit from what Sharin said, right, about change. Now, we all talk about the change. I would like to challenge each and every one of you to be that change. Don't just talk about the change, be that change. Take on the opportunities, explore what's out there because we want equal opportunities. We fight for equal opportunities. We ask for equal opportunities, but we don't put ourselves there and say, look, I'm good for this. Can I do this? Can mm. I, can I, you know, can I try this position? Can I try to be a moderator? Can I try to give you, uh, can I try to be the speaker? Can I try, right? So you're not giving yourself a chance by putting yourself out there and challenging yourself. The theme for this year for International Women's Day is choose to challenge. Yes. Right? So you choose to challenge and break the barriers. So choose to challenge means you challenge yourself. Don't challenge other people first. Challenge yourself. <laughs> and do something different, think out of the box, right? So we all say that, don't laugh box in Singapore, but <laughs> box meaning that if you have been doing three things, do five things. If you have been reading a book in a month, read two books in a month, 
So challenge yourself to make these changes. Go out there. If there is equal opportunity, look for them and put your hand up and say, I want to do it. Okay, so be that challenge, be that change, and uh, please do it. And last but not least, um, for me is, uh, I know most of you are available and capable. So don't do, don't do charity, but do humanity. I love it. Thanks, Dr. Alia. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, been a, a truly, truly inspiring uh, session for the morning. I hope it has filled up your cup for the day today and uh, keep on sharing uh, the others of, uh, of the positivities. Thank you again, uh, I am you, uh, to the team, uh, our panelists and our guests, uh, all of our guests who make some time this morning. And Jean Ansel said, no cafe needed, this dog is all I need. And exactly so. So before we wrap up for the day, uh, let us take the obligatory uh, group picture so that we can share in our social media and feel rejuvenated throughout the day. And uh, I'm very sure one year from now, Facebook will remind us that we have been sitting for an hour and a half to listen all the, to all of these fantastic women. And we, were, we, we have been inspired by all of them today. So uh, Najwa, can, can I get your help uh, to do this? Okay, we okay, are we have two pages, eh? gallery view. Can everyone put their video on so that we can take a nice photo of everyone? Mm. Lovely. Um, Doreen, as usual, um, page one, page two. Okay, I, um, Najwa, you are taking page one or page two? Page one. Okay. All right. How about the rest? Let me just check. Okay, we, we're seeing uh, some cameras uh, right. popping up now. Brilliant. Okay, one more minute. Okay. All right, are we, are we ready? Yes, ready, hold up, okay. One, two, three. One more time. One, okay. three. Okay. Next page. Yep. Everybody's looking good in their mask. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. All right, thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of our day. Thank you again and see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. I'm going to stay for a bit. Thank you, Doug, Patalia. Start recording. Yes, okay. <laughs> Just stop recording.